Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bones live for another edition of... And now it's time for another episode of Blogger's Corner with Britt. And welcome Britt back to the show. How's it going, Britt? It's doing well. I'm a little cold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little cold. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. <laughs> As... I know, we have a tornado warning going on where I'm at right now. So oh, it's really, eh? Out. Oh, okay, well... Never mind. You win. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this show is going to blow you all away. <laughs> well, I got shut down pretty quickly with that one. <laughs> well, we got to turn it. Oh, right. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> so, it's so, all good. <laughs> so today, um, like, there's a bit of music news, not tons and tons, but some interesting stuff. Uh, just, uh, more or less to kind of like a few updates uh now the red hot chili peppers will be joining bruno mars on stage for the super bowl halftime show uh tommy morello who everybody knows him from rage against machine and he did uh a pretty much a folk solo album called the night watchman now he's going to record his first soul rock album so this should be very interesting just because he is a mastermind when it comes to guitar and just invented so many new ways and different ways to play guitar and so many different sounds you can get out of a guitar, which is quite impressive as people who know Rage Gets Machine, that all those sounds are not computerized at all. It's all his guitar and it's absolutely insane how someone can get those sort of sounds and that sort of thing out of a guitar. So that should be very interesting. Uh, another thing is... Uh, uh, Paul McCartney did pay a tribute to Phil Everly, who is part of the Everly, Everly Brothers and the lead singer. He just passed away recently, actually last week, at the age of 74. So I think it'll be posted online very soon, so it should be interesting to see. And now we'll call it a comic relief <laughs> article. Because uh, if anybody knows ICP, otherwise known as Insane Clown Posse, uh, they're hardcore rappers at least that's what they call like to classify themselves as from detroit and now okay quick rewind about a year ago or so uh their followers are called juggalos and the fbi put a stop to it because they said it kind of um led to or insinuated uh uh gang violence and possible networking and blah blah blah, blah. so there's a huge argument over it and now that's all essentially all we're with now ICP and four fans are suing the FBI because of that saying that they got to remove this. This is ridiculous. And I just got to laugh because they, uh, the two guys, uh, violent J and the other one escapes my memory right now, but not really important. Um, essentially, Oh, Oh, shaggy two dope. Like, I mean, could you come up with any more names that were even more retarded? Uh, <laughs> so Anyways, point being is these guys bolstered all oh, they're two uh, tough white guys from the hood. I lived in Michigan. They lived in a place called Ferndale, Michigan, which is far from the hood by any means. <laughs> Couple rich guys who went to high school in Royal Oak, and uh, yeah, they uh, yeah they're, they're they're real badasses. So good for you guys. Let's sue the FBI and waste some more taxpayers and government time for no reason because of a stupid name. Thank you so much. So. <laughs> And that's the thing with, with a lot of these lawsuits now is like it's almost every other week you're seeing a lawsuit for something, whether it's like a copyright infringement, uh, something like this juggalo name, which is like I said, just uh, altogether ridiculous and and that sort of thing. And it just, it just it's getting out of hand. Like everybody's like looking to sue, make a quick buck. And most of these people are already like multimillionaires. And that's what gets me. And of course, you see the ones come up from a while ago where... You know, they're pretty much washed up and uh, they need some money. So now, oh, we're going to sue because potentially or these, this company allegedly, you know, played the song without paying us royalties and blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, my God, really? Like, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that now when you see the headlines, you almost don't even want to read the article anymore because you kind of know what's going to be about what the outcome is going to be. So it's just it's almost uh, a waste of time and in some cases uh, frustrating because it just... Why, why, I just, I just don't get it. I mean, I guess because, you know, I don't have lots of money. I, I can't uh, take a guess of why I would sue for something stupid or just 
essentially make up a loss. So you just make a quick buck. So, but that aside, uh, that's pretty much uh, the uh, probably uh, rock news. But in any rock news, uh, the band Papa Rebellion's EP will be coming out very very shortly, and uh, we're gonna get an advanced copy. So it's gonna be really cool, and I'll get to play a few songs from that. And Simon has already agreed, who's a lead singer for Papa Rebellion, to come back on the show. As you know, he was on the show. About a year ago, when their first EP came out, Chemical Friends, which is really awesome, and he's a fun guy, so I hope to have him back on, and he has agreed, so we just gotta set a date and time, and uh, find out, well, not find out, once the album's uh, released, and then we'll take it from there, and then uh, it should be a good time. So, um, <laughs> as far as uh, TV shows go, obviously there hasn't been too, too many new, well, well, no new seasons have really started back up yet. There has been one Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which, like I told you before we got on the air, that I have yet to watch it just because I haven't had time because we've been really busy. I've been really busy at work and with this and everything else, so I will get to it. And I can't, at the moment, nothing really, well, actually, no, this stuck out because I was actually thinking about this this morning. So uh, we're going to get to reality shows here for just one moment. And I talked about this last time, as we call it, the show Pawn Stars, which is on uh, the History Channel. Right. Okay. So, obviously, like we know, almost every reality show is very heavily edited and, uh, for the most part, <clears throat> scripted to a certain extent. Because, obviously, the same things can happen, like, week after week, you know, day after day sort of thing. And uh, with this show, I mean, personally, I watch it just because I like to see the stuff that comes in and just the history behind them. Because, otherwise, it's just kind of mind-numbing. I mean, it's got a, a good kind of, not plot line, but a, a good, we'll call it, cast of characters to kind of make it a little bit funny so it's not completely a waste of time and i was watching it the other night and of course the setup couldn't have been any more like set up so what happens is one of the owners goes to england for a vacation he's going to meet a friend who owns a pawn shop there what happens gets to the airport the guy's not there so he sent his assistant assistant's never been to, never been to london but but he studied the map the day before so apparently he's going to show uh him around even though it's his very, his very first trip to london so you know Ooh, uh, possibly exciting uh, uh, um, plot line. This could be funny. Not really. It was actually very annoying. I actually I fast forwarded through because I couldn't stand to watch anymore. Because what happened? Pawn Star guy started explaining about the Parliament and Big Ben and that stuff to the kid, which is like, like that's that it just wasn't funny. I mean, it just like it was just kind of really, really reaching for the stars there with that one. So, but uh, other than that. Uh, well, that's my frustration with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'm trying to relate. I just know that you know how reality shows, like you said, it's just so it's so faked and scripted, and they don't even want to admit it. And I like a lot. Most times, I'd rather just watch actors I know are acting, and probably better actors than the people on these reality shows tell me a story in an hour than I would like to watch the reality show, the quote unquote reality of it all. But I mean. It, it, some, I find that most reality shows are really good in their first season. They have like a good first season, and after that, things start to get very convoluted. And you know, look at The Hills, for instance. That that just went down. That just went down the tubes because they just kept scripting and scripting, and it, it got bigger than what it was about. So that really lost its magic. Right, and I mean, I, I can't I can't tell you how how upset I was when I found out that wrestling wasn't real last week. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, those people, like, you'll talk to wrestling fans, we're like, no, it's totally real. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I mean, you know, to each their own, but yeah, I mean, did, I agree. I mean, did, I think we all know it was fake. Fred, did you catch that last bit or did you choose to ignore it? <laughs> oh, about the wrestling? I, I guess I said, I said what I found wrestling was, was fake last week. Oh, last <laughs> week. Okay. Sorry. So. <laughs> No, no big deal. But no, I mean, you know what? When I found out, I, I honestly was not upset about it at all. I to be completely honest, like, meh, whatever. I, I wasn't upset, but it's like I want to be on. I like a little bit of honesty there. I can, I can still watch it. I can still watch a movie if I know it's a bunch of special effects. But I don't feel like there's a need to lie to people and say that you know we really just blew up a, a train. Um, no, you guys faked it with CGI. That's cool. I'll see that effect, but I don't need you to lie about it. <laughs> no, very true. No, I can agree with that. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's 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 crazy. You know what? Um, just the risking for one moment. Uh, 
about 10 years ago, I was working at the Ottawa airport in Ottawa, Ontario, and uh, the WWE was coming through. And honestly, they are the nicest bunch of people. Like, they really are. Cool. And uh, it was nice because, you no, know, and you see, you see these guys on TV, so you're kind of hoping. And the one, one guy was really funny because he completely played out his TV persona was Rob Van Dam. <laughs> Okay. Completely played out the character the entire time, and it was killing me because he's supposed to pr pretty much, pretty much uh, mocking a, a kind of like relaxed kind of no uh, uh, surfer guy, right? Mm -hmm. Just completely chill and like right on, man. You know, and I am Rob Van Dam, and every time he does it, he uses his thumbs and points at himself, and then he says his full name. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, like really nice guy, and uh, the ones that I was like, it was <laughs> kind of something else. Uh, Two of the two of them, uh, they used to be uh, uh, linebackers for the Raiders. So these guys are like six 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 seven. You know, they're about they're almost like three bills, and they're just massive. You know, so you look up because they're like towering over you. Like, I mean, I'm six feet, and these guys are just like looking down at me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and uh, why was I uh, I was working when they're coming through? So I got to talk to a bunch of them, and one uh, the they were like a duo. They were called Rosie and Jamal. And Rosie comes through first, and of course, no, Rosie's six seven and three hundred pounds of muscle. So, you know, so he comes through, and I, I, I'm looking up at him, and uh, he he asked me, he goes, "Y'all set?" And I was like, uh, "It's like no, I got a little thumb with this." It's like, it's like, I don't know, man. He goes, he goes, "Really?" I always say, "It's like I don't know." He says, "Man, don't make me get on my knee pads." It's like you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he started laughing, but it was funny because, like, his hand literally could probably pick me up by my head. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, like, he, he, he was a big guy. And let me tell you, if you didn't know what they did, it'd be very, very intimidating. It still was a little intimidating because he was so big. I, whoa, I can't imagine. <laughs> I mean, I'm five feet tall, so that <laughs> would be um, very, uh, very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost two feet on you, you know? I know, I know. That would be whoa. That mm, that's very intimidating. But it was it was cool, and like and like I said, they were they were very nice. I mean, it's one of those things that you know, even if they are uh, you no know, them, anyone are in the public eye a lot. You know, they're kind of supposed to be nice. They're fans, blah blah, and that sort of thing. They're not always, as we've seen many many times. So yes, Justin Bieber, anyone? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, I know that's fine. No, he's uh, yeah, he uh, I I don't want to get into him anymore. I just I'm I'm sick of little twerp, but I just wish he'd go away and stop uh, pretty much making Canada look bad. Yes, I agree. <laughs> because well, you know, I mean, everybody everybody kind of quote unquote represents the, the country. If you're a big musician, movie star, or what have you, so you know, you you want to make us look good, and not bad, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. There are quite a few people from America that I just kind of like shake my head about. <laughs> well, it's one of those things. It just, you get it anywhere you go. So it's like, it's, it's just whether or not they, they make a loud enough noise to be heard and seen or just because they already have their fandom. It's like, well, look at this person. He did this. It's like, really? Like, why are we hearing about this? And why is that little, you know, <laughs> but whatever. I mean, I, I totally okay. Agree. Yeah. Let's get off him because he's just frustrating me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what else has gone on. Um, uh, we'll briefly talk about this, but uh, this week, uh, as a lot of you posted, I put up a couple of Instagram pics, and it got pretty cold here. It was minus 41 Celsius, which is brutal. And I did have uh, a band uh, pretty much coax me into doing it. I was happy to oblige, Joe. Uh, it was pretty much Mel from Braver Than Fiction. She... Uh, Cause I put on the I put hashtag cold uh, snow 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 and she's like snow angel snow angel snow angel is like fine <laughs> so I did it <laughs> and Whoa. man was it cold <laughs> oh lord <laughs> so it was only for a few seconds but I was like I was up pretty quickly <laughs> I know I saw the on the news being being cold where the people on uh, New Year's when they um, went into the water you right. Know, freezing cold water and i think they call it the polar bear race or something yep i don't know yeah you pretty much run in the water in a speedo and come right back out yeah no thanks <laughs> but you know um it's uh 
here it was it got to the point where the warnings on on the weather channel on the weather network was saying you know make sure you're 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 well covered if you're gonna if you if you do go out because you know pretty much any exposed skin within two three minutes can get frostbite Oh, man. That's how strong the winds were. It was it was brutal. It was not fun, let me tell you. <laughs> Yikes. It makes me think of that movie that, um, I think it was called The Ice Harvest with John Cusack. And he's playing, he's supposed to, he, it's like the coldest time of the year. So there's having this unbelievable freeze and he's outside trying to dispose of a body. Anyway, <laughs> it's very complicated. But every time I think about that movie, I get really, really cold. And now I'm <laughs> very, very cold. <laughs> Oh, oh so, sorry. I mean, it's a lot warmer now. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it it's literally from one extreme to the other. I mean, all the snow is melting because it's been raining all day. And no, like I said, uh, it's uh, plus five Celsius right now. And so we literally went from one extreme to the other. Like, it was like a 50 degree jump within like three or four days. That's going to so. be some bad storms. Yeah, well, like I said, right now we're just, we're, it's just raining. No, uh, no storms are predicted yet. <laughs> so. So well, we'll we'll see if it happens, but you know, I'm I'm hoping not. So uh, the other thing is too is this Tuesday since I am on vacation, I will be going to see Anchorman two, and we talked about that before we got on the air, and hopefully it's gonna be half decent. I mean, but either way, I just like I just want to see it, so I'm hoping for the best. There you go. I mean, I have heard some not so great things, but I like like I said off the air. If you have low expectations, sometimes things can really surprise you, and that makes the movie better than if you had big expectations going in, and then things aren't as great. Well, that's right, and so, all like I said, I'll, I'll 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 keep an open mind about it. So I just I'm just hoping it's not like horrible, horrible, horrible to the point where it's like, uh, do I really want to sit through the rest of this, or do I? Yeah, that would be the movie dinner for schmucks. <laughs> 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 please do avoid that movie like it is the bubonic plague it is oh, i'm still i still have resentment towards steve carell because of that movie <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know what i like i think i told you before the only movie i walked out on was uh godzilla with matthew with uh, matthew broderick that was like i was like done i can't do this this was too stupid and i'm not enjoying this at all yeah, it takes uh, it takes a lot for me. The movie that my dad walked in, my dad is a huge movie fan, probably where I get it from. The only movie he has walked out of was Zoolander. Really? I thought that was amazing. <laughs> he did. He walked out and he demanded his money back. <laughs> the, 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 the theater was like, we hear you. It is awful. We'll give you your money back. <laughs> See, I, they, I, they did. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I didn't see it in the theaters. I saw it on, uh, on DVD or where it was, but I, I thought it was funny. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> my, dad is a hard, my dad is a hard critic to please. So you know, if something's amazing, then you know, I and mean, if he says it's amazing, it has to really match the grade. Well, yeah, I mean that's fine. Everybody's entitled to have their own opinion. I'm not, I'm not knocking them for not liking it. I'm just saying I did. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I know different strokes for different folks and all that. <laughs> and I'm just trying to think. There's one more thing that I want to mention. And oh yeah, that's right. The uh, one music news I did forget is Outcast is going to be headlining Coachella this year, which is awesome. So they're back together, and I was actually talking about them uh, the other day, and I remember their names, but I couldn't remember the band's name for some reason. So yeah, Outcast will be headlining Coachella this year, and they will be uh, at the Governor's Ball as well. So everybody is happy to see Outcast back. Now the next question is: Is there any new music coming? Which uh, I would like to know. I'm sure a lot of people would like to know, and uh, it's going to happen because the last one was uh, the double, uh, the double CD with uh, the Love Below and then Speaker Box. So that was great. I mean, I love the division. It was a really smart idea. So I'm hoping the new stuff will be just as cool, if not better. So I hope so because I hope they keep like in the vein of what they were doing back then. Was it's like when No Doubt came back with a new album? I was a big No Doubt fan, and then they were trying to keep up with what everybody else was doing and then return to their old sound no doubt oh. <laughs> hey <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry but this one I'm going to disagree with you on because I I cannot stand them I think they're an imposter band like, because they classify themselves as a punk and Scott and they were far far from it I just like and that's what really uh, that's what really got me don't distinct yourself with something when you're not and uh, well, I mean, they, might, they got pop 
popular and obviously like with that like maybe they start out i wasn't there from the giddy go but it, it, like as things evolve it's really hard to have your music go popular and you do remain true to all of the roots because everything you hear in pop popular music is kind of a little bit of everything no fair enough but i mean like at the time i mean it was actually kind of popular it was doing well so they they could have but anyways but, but just plain and simple, I just like I'm just like I said, I'm not a fan, and I'm really not a fan of Gwen Stefani at all. So, what did she do to you? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> did she hit you with one of her lamb handbags? Uh, no, she hit me with that stupid song "Hollow Bad Girls." <laughs> okay, now that is a terrible. That and "Rich Girls" that was a terrible song. Her solo career, I only like the. Um, like one song from that whole venture and everything, I was much more a fan of the collective Gwen Stefani. So yeah, but that that's just me. Like I mean, I just well, there 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 are gonna be some artists I just I just flat out don't like. And, I just, and she's one of them. So <laughs> that's got nothing to do with her being a female. I just am not a fan at all. Okay, as a female, I I understand. So I mean, I, there's a I I love a lot of female artists, and she's just not one of them. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she's different. I mean, you know, pr- pretty pretty much the top two on my list are Gwen Stefani and Celine Dion. Celine Dion, you don't like Celine Dion? Oh, man. she just she just irritates the hell out of me. Like I just I, I don't know why, but she just really bothers me. Is it because of Rene? I had nothing to do with him. It was just way before he even <laughs> stepped into the scene. I mean, like, no, if you if you, if you want to. Uh, do that, go right ahead, knock yourself out, have fun, That's, I could care less, but it just, just I, I don't know, I just, I think in some cases, like, it's not just the music I'm not a fan of, I just, I think she just kind of went overboard, overboard with some of the cheesiness, you know, like, oh, thank you, I love you, blah, 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 blah. please come back, see me again, you know, like, if you can pay 80 to 90 dollars for a minimum ticket, I'm now I'm going to be paying 200 plus because I'm in Vegas, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I I recently watched a concert special with her for the holidays. She didn't really sing much Christmas music, but I was funny. I, the thing that she always tends to do is talk about Renee. Everything goes back to Renee, and I, I mean, nothing against her personally. I'm sure I may think that's great that she talks about her husband that much. More power to her. But like sometimes she does get a little too emotional. Like I remember after Hurricane Katrina, Larry King had her on the show, and he asked her to start seeing like live right on the show in honor of our you know like to try to bring some kind of music i don't i don't really know why he asked it was so strange <laughs> and she was just like what and like she was like crying she was like what you want me to sing and i, I was like oh i think this might be the end of Celine dion oh my god anyway, like, like i said <laughs> she just like i said she just i don't know she just bothers me like and like I said, it was even before Renee. Like it's, it's like the music. I mean, it wouldn't matter who's saying type of music she was doing. I wouldn't like it anyways. So it's, it's not, it's not the type of music. I just like she just, it just really seems to go overboard with a lot of things, and that's what drives, what drives me the most nuts. I mean, I know I get it. Like, but you know, kind of, you know, tame it down a little bit. I think people are getting sick of hearing that over and over and over again. Yeah, I, I guess they are. I'm sure her heart will go on though. <laughs> 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 I, that was a perfect setup for that one. <laughs> I know, I've been chomping a bit. I'm sorry. Uh, no, don't apologize. It was a good one. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, 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 many think, so many people have thanked. I, I, I wish I had, a, had an applause clip right now. <laughs> oh, well, no, the, the, I'm doing a bow. <laughs> you know, the big crowd, woo! <laughs> or maybe we should get a laugh track, eh? Like, <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> Do you know that the, 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 the weird thing is a lot of those laugh tracks are actually very old. Yes, they are. They're like from like the 40s and the 50s and that sort of thing. So. And they're still relevant because people like still laugh the same way, which is weird. <laughs> well, exactly. You know, and it's just one of those things that you know you you expect it, and it's it's always it's always obviously the, the tip off that the show is not live. You know, like. Cause a lot of times they'll they'll tell you and like and then you hear that's like that's not a studio audience that's a that's a pre-recorded yeah that is very lame i remember 
watching the live Will and Grace years ago, and they had an actual live audience, and just hearing the difference between their like live reaction and hearing the canned audience. But we've been so accustomed to the canned audience that I don't know. It felt it was really weird. You know what was funny? They did it for a number of years. Was uh, if you remember on the Drew Carey show, every year they did one show completely ad libbed and live. Neat. And it was always really funny. And it's one of those things like, you know, you you can tell it actually was live. I mean, just, you know, they, they, they forget something, they're trying to think of something. And then, you know, they, they drop like an F-bomb or something like, oh, crap. You know, <laughs> I didn't realize like, <laughs> like it wasn't done, wasn't done on purpose, right? Just like, they, they blanked for a second. Yes, they did. <laughs> but it was always interesting to see what they come up with, you know, because he had, he had a good cast and like a lot of good ad libbers and like, one of them being uh, uh, Ryan, uh, what's his last name? Um, oh my God, I can't believe I forget his last name. Ryan Stiles. Oh. And he was on, uh, uh, whose line is it anyways? Him and uh, Colin Mockery and uh, Jeff Proops. You ever saw that? I never saw that. I, I've seen it on TV. I've never watched like a whole episode. Okay. But I know Greg Proops from Chelsea lately. Right. So they're they're all they're all comedians, but they're all good at ad libbing, and that's what's pretty much all about, you know. So they they take a suggestion from the audience, and then they they act it out. So pretty much what the audience says, they have to do. Right. And uh, it's always really funny. So that kind of obviously incorporated into the show, so it made it that much funnier because Ryan Stiles was so good at it that, you know, you were not you were expecting uh, good stuff all the time and he delivered each time. That's cool. Ad-libbing is a very... Uh, people, uh, sometimes I'll see a movie and it'll say that the, most of the dialogue was ad-libbed and sometimes that kills the magic for some people. But for me, that is a very impressive skill because you have to be thinking right there in that moment and coming up with something, I know like the camera rolls about, they do like 50 different takes, but it's still very important for a comedian to be able to do that. You know, and I think we talked about this briefly uh, during the Christmas special because, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, when he freaks out talking about his boss, you know, wish he was here, but, and he goes the whole thing. That entire uh, little, little, if you even want to call it the rant, was completely ad libbed. Right, that, yes. So that was really cool because it was really funny. And there was another movie, uh, uh, actually a very, very funny movie, probably one of my favorites, is the Steve Martin's first movie called The Jerk. Hmm, I have not seen that yet. That is really funny, definitely worth watching.